So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a bar chart. And you can see I have some information from a previous science fair project um, that looks at the amount of time that a battery lasts in different high drain devices. So from this, I'm going to just highlight on my data to create my chart. So this is all the data that I want to include in that chart. I'm going to click right here under more to find that chart option. I'm going to insert a chart. This is going to bring up my wizard, my interface on how to create that chart. So it's created the chart for me. You can see that it's a bar chart just as I expected, but it doesn't really communicate what I want the viewer to understand. And what I would like them to understand is how the batteries compare to each other. So in this bar chart right now, the batteries are separated into different categories all the way across. And you can see how they perform in the devices and easily compare those, but it's hard to compare the batteries to each other. So what I would like is I would like clusters of bars and each bar to represent a different battery type rather than each bar representing a different device. So you need to go in here and make some changes so that it looks and it reflects and it communicates the information that I would like it to. So I'm going to go down here on my chart editor in the setup and I'm going to click switch rows and columns. And then it says use column A as headers. I'm going to turn that off um, and then I'm going to turn it back on and it's going to fix that chart for me. So now you can see this is the further remote control car, the three, four different batteries, how they behave, how they act for each one, the flashlight and the Bluetooth speaker. So the chart itself looks the way I'd like it to. The bars are correct at least, but the title doesn't really reflect what the chart is trying to communicate. This label here is not in the right place. This should be on the Y axis because this is the time my battery lasts. And I like these labels to be down here because they're a little confusing on top of the bars. So I still need to edit this and make sure that it looks and communicates what I'd like it to. Um, and this label is also not correct. That's not the battery type down there. This is the different device. So the first thing I'm going to come up is come up here. I'm going to look at my X axis. And it says my label should be battery type, and that's not correct. So I'm going to change it. And I'm going to change it right here to say battery type. And so it's going to read battery type as the row header battery type. And it's going to put my different, sorry, row header this way. And it's going to put my different devices in there the way I wanted them to. Then right here, I'm actually going to remove this header. I don't want it to be that. I don't want it to say battery type. I want it to describe this really as my, my three different devices. So I'm going to change that to say high drain devices. And you can see it updated that automatically. So now I'm under customize. Um, the customize label has a lot of different things that I can customize in here. And I'm in the chart and axis title. While I'm in here, I would also like to label my Y axis and change the title of my chart. So in this drop down menu, I'm going to select chart title. I'm going to change this to say battery performance and high drain devices. Because that really reflects what this chart is communicating. It's trying to communicate how do these batteries perform in these different high drain devices? And then I like this to be centered. So I'm going to come down here and click my alignment and make it centered. The last thing I need to do is add my Y axis label. So my vertical axis title. See, there's nothing right now. I'm going to put in. Right. And this is the time battery lasted right there. Look, it auto-populated for me, so that's fantastic. Anytime you have quantitative data, meaning a number, something you calculated, something you counted, something you measured, um, anything like that, you need to make sure that you include the units. In this chart right here, when I say 5, 10, 15, and I'm referring to time, it could be a number of different things. It could be five seconds, it could be five minutes, it could be five hours, it could be five days, it could be five years. Um, what I need to do is communicate that information um, so that everybody can understand exactly what I'm talking about. So here you can say I have, 
You can see I've written HR to represent the number of hours that these batteries lasted. And then once I'm happy with that chart, I like to move it so it's not covering my information. And I can see both pieces of information at the same time. And then the last step is just always double check your chart and make sure it's perform performing, performing the way that you would expect it to. So in my remote controlled card, I see the energizer is 10. And if I read my chart, my remote controlled car energizer is blue and it's also 10. Duracell is 12, my store brand's nine, Kirkland brand's 11. So just do this one last check because sometimes people create these graphs and charts and they put them in their presentation and they don't actually reflect what they want them to reflect. The numbers might come through wrong um, and they might get mixed up. Um, just do that last little check, make sure everything matches up the way that you would expect it to. And then I'm happy with that and I can go ahead and use the NAT in my presentation.